Today I'm here at DC Pianos with a acoustic piano that I get a lot of requests to review. Both the U1 and the U3 are acoustic pianos that are incredibly popular and incredibly well known and as a result people want to know my opinions of them so that's what I'm going to be doing here today. While this acoustic piano looks brand new on the inside and on the outside it's actually not. It's actually from 1983 which is quite impressive and the tone of it is also really nice for such a used piano. I haven't looked at the inside but it does look like somebody has played it a lot with the practice felts down which will help conserve the hammers and if I take a quick look at the hammers there is a little bit of wear on them but really not that much at all so someone has played this a little bit in the past but not really all that much to affect the tone of course it does have a somewhat of a brighter tone because after all it is a Yamaha and it is older and it's been played a bit but it has a bit of a nice fatness especially in the mid-range that I really like and I wasn't expecting I was expecting something a bit more glassy and shrill but actually it has a pretty nice tone and of course you can always voice the hammers as well to give it a bit more warmth and fuzziness to the sound as well. Now, as I mentioned, this is an incredibly popular um, model of piano. And in fact, one of the largest piano, piano YouTubers on the, this platform actually uses one of these in virtually every single one of his videos. I'm not gonna mention him by name, but I think many of you guys will recognize uh, his videos and many of you guys probably have seen them as well. He usually has his camera on the other side of him and he covers up the logos to hide what model of piano he is. I'm not sure exactly why he would do that because the U1 is a very well-known piano that many people respect. Is it a top of the line piano? No, but it's not very far behind and it's a very, very well respected piano. Um, perhaps he thinks maybe copyright issues or something with showing the name, I don't know. But regardless, I believe that particular YouTuber uses a U1 in nearly all of his videos and that's what I'm gonna be playing on today. Now, another thing that's really cool about at least this particular U1, because it's from 1983, is actually it's very affordable as well. And this is another reason why the U1 and to a lesser extent, the U3 are incredibly popular. Not that the U3 is less popular, but just it's a little bit uh, higher end and will be a little bit more uh, expensive. Now this particular U1, because it's from 1983, is actually around 4,700 US dollars, which in the term of upright pianos definitely isn't super expensive. It's not super cheap, but it's definitely not super expensive either. And I think for the money you're you're paying, you're getting a really nice piano. The tone may not be for everyone, but I think the as far as the durability is concerned and long longevity of the piano, it's basically going to last you a lifetime, especially with some basic maintenance here and there. So without any further ado, let's test out the sound of this Yamaha U1 and hopefully the traffic behind me isn't causing too much of a problem. The Yamaha sound isn't for everybody, but I think for those of you who do like the Yamaha sound, I think you'll really like the sound of this piano. I particularly like the treble. For myself personally, if this were my own piano, I would certainly think about perhaps getting the uh, hammers in this region of the piano softened up a little bit just to make the sound a tad bit warmer, but it's not bad the way it is. I really like the treble though, just the way it is. I think it's beautiful, it's pure, it's crystalline, and it really, really is lovely. And as a whole, this piano does have a very pure sound. This is why U1s and U3s and Yamaha uprights in general are very popular choices for small recording studios, especially at home. They have a very clean sound, a very bright sound, and they punch through the mix and are very, very easy to hear. They don't have a, a muddy, fuzzy sound that might be difficult to record with in certain scenarios. It's basically just an easy to record piano, and it honestly is really great to play as well. The action of this, I'm pretty used to the way Grands feel as well, so this has a bit of a different feel to me too, um, but it's certainly not bad either. The action has kind of a little more springiness to it than I expect from a grand piano, but it's really lovely to play on as well, and I do enjoy playing it. I'd like to play the treble a little bit more, and then maybe I'll play a little bit of maybe some Bach. Let's do some Bach maybe, or some Debussy. I don't know, it just depends what I feel like doing. Let's try a little bit more of the treble though. I love it.
Of course, the low bass end honestly sounds a bit like your standard upright piano, but the treble up here is quite nice. And remember how I said that I'd like to kind of voice this area a little bit more mellow? I think possibly, it's hard to say because of the loud environment outside, but maybe the treble could even go the other way and could have a slight bit of a sharper edge to it as well. But as it is, I do like the tone as well. It has a very nice pure, clean, pleasant to listen to sound, at least for my ears. Let's try a little bit of Claire de Lune and try some true classical on here now and see how it handles that. I'm expecting no problems at all. It's a solid piano. Let's take a close look at the inside of this acoustic piano from 1983 and just take a look at some of the things that are absolutely amazing about it. As I said, it looks like basically a brand new piano and with the exception of the slight wear that is on our damper rail here, I think that that holds true even when you come up closer to the piano. If we take a look here at the pins uh, of the piano, these are of course the tuning pins that you use to tune the piano, they're in absolutely perfect condition. They're no longer shiny, but they don't have any signs of rust on them whatsoever and the harp behind them is absolutely spotless as well, so that is really, really wonderful. If we fold down the damper rail a little bit so you can see the strings a tiny bit better. You can see there's no rust there, no corrosion, no any kind of problems there. So the the finish of the piano on the inside is absolutely pristine. As I mentioned, there is some slight wear on the damper rail here, which isn't really that big of a deal, but it does show that somebody has played this piano a bit in the past, and which you guys probably aren't able to see, but uh, one thing that's always great at always a great idea to do is to look at the hammers of a used piano and see how much wear there is on them. You can see some slight grooves from the strings of the piano as the hammers constantly slam into them. They leave little grooves and over time these grooves can get deep but in this case they're not very deep at all and honestly is very very mild especially for a piano from 1983. So the hammers are in really really great shape as well. They're all clean too which is a great thing to look for. If a piano is dirty on the inside well that's not a great sign and there's probably going to be bigger problems than that. But this is absolutely perfectly clean and the action as a whole, to me, basically looks brand new. Like I said, a little bit of wear here, not a big deal. And overall, the action and the inside of the piano is absolutely beautiful. To me, this doesn't look like a 1983 piano. This looks like something that rolled off of Yamaha showroom floor three years ago. And in my opinion, it looks absolutely amazing. And this is one good thing to do when you're looking for a used piano, is to take a look at the inside. Even if you know little at all about the construction of pianos, you, a lot of the basic issues like rust and corrosion are easy things for anyone to spot. And clearly, this piano has none, but it's always a good idea to take a look at the inside of a piano, whether it's an acoustic or an upright or a grand, and to take a look at the inside to see what kind of condition it's in. This is in, in my opinion, flawless condition. With the exception of the dust on the keys, which is really throwing me off there a little bit, this is a fantastic piano, and I really can't say I have any major complaints at all. The only the small little things I mentioned before are honestly pretty nitpicky about the voicing. I'm just saying what could theoretically make this piano better, but as it is, it's really fantastic, and it's an absolutely solid instrument. Uh, the action really has a wonderful feel. It's very responsive. It's really great for classical, really great for pop, really great for just about anything at all, and it really has a lovely sound to it as well. Of course, it does have the standard of the standard small drawbacks of an upright piano, most noticeably in the bass, but the treble and the mid-range tone of it is really, really excellent and honestly is great to play. So there's a reason the Yamaha U1 is very popular, and that's because it's just a solid, all-around great piano. And especially if you get a used one in phenomenal condition like this, it doesn't look like a piano from 1983, it doesn't sound like a piano from 1983, and it doesn't play like a piano from 1983. In my opinion, it looks, sounds, and plays pretty much like a new piano. Uh, and it's absolutely wonderful, and I think for, you know, 4700 US dollars, uh, it's going to be difficult to find something a lot better than this as well. I've said the same exact thing for a different price point of a completely different piano here at the shop, but I think this is the exact same way. Uh, it's a really, really great piano, and of course, if you wanted something more art case, you could get an art case piano, or you could pay more and get something taller and bigger, or something antique, but, you know, it's a solid piano, and there's a reason these are popular, and they're 
they're, they're good. They're good. That's all I can really say. And since there's not really there's not really that much to talk about with these because they're a pretty standard upright piano. There's not really that much that makes them special other than the fact that they're just simply a simple, solidly built piano that really won't give you any problems at all. One thing I thought I would demo here is the little uh, little felt thing. Uh, there's a technical name for it. I'm forgetting that. It's a practice rail, I think, uh, that drops in front of the hammers and makes the piano sound nice and quiet. Of course, with that practice whale down, you can really wail on the piano and play it very loud, and it will hardly make any noise at all, which is a great alternative to one of Yamaha's silent systems, which are amazing, but of course will bring the price of the piano way up. So for a affordable acoustic upright piano, this is really, really amazing. Uh, if I were in the market for a, you know, acoustic piano, upright piano like this, this would certainly be one of my options because it's a really, really great acoustic piano. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video here at DC Pianos, and I highly recommend if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area or in California at all, you might want to come up to DC Pianos and check them out. They have some amazing, amazing pianos. The folks here are super friendly and honestly, absolutely amazing. If you're not able to do that though, you also might want to go check out my channel because I have loads of videos from DC Pianos and I've tested out feels like practically every piano in their store, but their inventory is constantly changing, so every time I come here, there's new things to try. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to go check out my channel, and if you do that, thank you very much. If you want to subscribe, we thank you even more, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.